welcome to Trader Talk TV this week. This week we've got uh, Petri from Enrich. Petri, thank you for coming in today. Thank you. And before we jump into our uh, our concept this week, which is around the data-driven publisher, we're going to get Petri to introduce what uh, Enrich does. Yeah, so Enrich is basically a company that enables publishers to morph into data-driven publishers. Yeah. Um, it's probably a relatively new concept. Most of advertising technology or technology around the publishing and the buying and selling advertising yeah. being focused and sort of motivated by the buyers. Mm -hmm. So doing something to really help the publishers is a, we think is a refreshing thing to do as well. Okay, so we're going to discuss the concept of the data-driven publishing. We've yes. heard about a lot with data-driven advertising. But let's talk about your uh, view on that. Like, let's, yes. let's map that out. So, so like, let's start from the uh, sort of a brief history course. Yeah. Uh, the data-driven advertising obviously came to into existence uh, via RTB, or yeah. the RTB discussion. And if we look at RTB, it gave us two fundamental concepts. Mm -hmm. One is the notion that you can actually use data to inform your marketing decisions. Yeah. Um, the second was that there is definitely need for automation, for automation mm -hmm. across the all of all of online advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, these two things are fundamentally what RTV gave us. Now RTV itself, uh, as we all know, is sort of perhaps in a, in a slight hangover state at present. Yeah. Uh, but it definitely has a role to play. It is the predominant mechanism for performance advertising. Mm -hmm. So chasing after clicks or retar retargeting messaging. Uh, but if we look at the data driven publisher, that that discussion turns into a premium publisher mm. environment. Now, as a premium publisher, if I look at my inventory, and this is probably not a new triangle to anyone, mm -hmm. it would probably consist of about 30% mm -hmm. being direct sold or direct sold premium. Another DSP acronym. Yeah. Just <laughs> accidentally, so not, an int not intentional at all. Yeah. And then this large chunk here would either have been entirely unmonetized. Mm. Uh, some small publishers apply this 30% of inventory, that is their less premium inventory, yeah. for internal cross-promotion, house yeah. ads, yeah, advertising. Yeah, yeah. Or then you can do what others do, which, which is, is farm it out. You farm it out to ad networks and, well, today you farm it out to ad networks but via an SSP. Yeah. So there's a single gateway, more efficient for you. Mm -hmm. Now what a data-driven publisher actually is, is it's taking the notion of data and automation, mm -hmm. but applying it to a context that's probably a bit newer. Yeah. So applying the notions from RTB, but not the protocol itself. Yeah. So applying data and applying automation yeah. to direct premium sales. Okay. Now what direct premium sales is, is effectively guaranteed guaranteed sales mm -hmm. unless you can guarantee delivery there's no way you can expect anyone to pay a premium price mm -hmm. the second thing is the placement and formats made available mm -hmm. need to be premium as well okay so there's no point in, in talking about premium sales or premium campaign inventory mm -hmm. Uh, regardless of the amount of data applied to it, mm -hmm. unless the format and the environment, the media context, the site brand itself yeah. is suitable. So these two things combined with data and automation is, is what we call the data-driven publisher or the enabling components of a data-driven publisher. Now what this actually means is from a publisher perspective is that when applying data to your premium guaranteed inventory, you sell guaranteed audiences, so you can sell men on a guaranteed placement, mm -hmm. on a guaranteed site, or on a guaranteed placement on a runoff site or runoff networking. Mm -hmm. um, you also apply, so this is applying data for targeting. Mm -hmm. Now from a publisher perspective, when you are selling premium campaigns and it's a campaign model that you're selling, not impression by impression, mm -hmm. you don't actually necessarily want to get into micro segments. Yeah. It actually ends up hurting your efficiency and your business all mm -hmm. in all. So it makes a lot more sense to sell broader audience buckets, if you will. Yeah. But still defined in a way that is very easy to understand, like demographics, for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second thing of applying data is applying the same audience data for reporting. Now, this is where it really gets more interesting and far more scalable as a value driving instrument for the publisher mm. is that audience targeted campaigns are today a small fraction of the premium guaranteed sales. Yeah. Uh, with many publishers it doesn't even exist yet. Right. Now fast forward perhaps 12, 16, 18 months, 
the share of audience targeted campaigns of the premium direct sales will probably be 20-30%. But the reporting value add of the same audience data can be applied from day one, from today, effectively to every single campaign you're currently selling. Mm -hmm. So in the reporting, instead of targeting the campaign, you look up what ad was shown on what page to what user, mm -hmm. and then you look also whether these user happen to click on the ad. Mm. If click is not the response metric, then you look at how many seconds the user was exposed to the ad. Right. So building a very rich reporting layer for every single campaign based on audience data is something that scales a lot faster from a publisher perspective. Mm. And it's also something every agency is ultimately looking for. So in the last couple of weeks and months, we've seen a lot of the ad tech vendors try and, try and claim are trying to claim this top layer of yes. programmatic guaranteed, programmatic premium, whatever it is. Do you think that this is going to go what well, the way of an automated buy, a static buy, or like an interface or an execution through a DSP or whatever else? Not via RTB mm -hmm. specifically, not on the impression level, but automated programmatic buys. Do you think that's that's where this is going to go, or I think it will, and that brings us to the second part. If data has the value component or is the value driver for targeting as well as reporting. Yeah. Uh, the second piece is automation. Mm -hmm. Now everyone knows that insertion order, the RFP process from start to finish is an incredibly complex process to yes. run. Uh, then again, using the APIs in the existing primary ad service, for example, uh, coming up with more sophisticated sales and planning self-servicing tools, um, there's nothing stopping us from taking the concept of automation Thank you, RTB, for this concept as well. Yeah. And just applying that to campaign automation. Mm -hmm. So there's really nothing stopping publishers from having a very simple sales tool that direct brand advertisers can access themselves. So they can go to, straight from an ad server or an interface or whatever they're using, a DSP, and say, well, this is the guarantee buy I want for the Guardian or the Financial Times or whatever yes. it is, and then buy you, the actual place. Yeah, so you can go in, and, or you should be able to go in and see, well, how many male, affluent male audiences does the Guardian have to sell, to offer to me on their front page, mm -hmm. on this placement, uh, during the month of March. Mm. This is something that brings a level of automation to direct premium sales, yeah. to campaign sales. Now, this is once again a campaign-based sale model still. Yeah. So ultimately, it doesn't require the impression level mechanics of RTB. Absolutely. But the notion of applying automation, both for the buyers as well as for the sellers, of course makes sense. It's, mm. it's the most intuitive thing there is out there. Yeah. So do you think that there'll be a sort of church and state thing that this will be exclusively campaign, brand-driven, top-level stuff? And then the bottom tier will be or will be DOR performance related. I think there's a, perhaps the biggest battle to be waged will be around this <laughs> order. So where do you draw it? Yeah. Um, as a premium publisher, I, I've not come across a single premium publisher who would rather risk yeah. their top layer to grow the bottom layer a bit. Mm -hmm. I think the emphasis is now finally coming into into a very sane model where publishers are looking at how do I actually strengthen and increase and grow the top layer of well, that, my inventory. Would well, the case where you figure out that line where it should sit, should be about clever yield or just basically sort of on campaign data from both sort of... Uh, I think, I think it'll be on a combination of three factors. So one will be the audience behind yeah. it. So when you start selling audience, guaranteed audiences at guaranteed placements, you actually get to scarcity by definition because certain audience segments will be in higher demand than others. Yeah. Uh, the second is the site or the brand context itself. Yeah. If you are a large publishing group, you will most likely have certain brands mm -hmm. that you own mm -hmm. and operate mm -hmm. that have a much higher brand association value than others. Yeah. So that is the other component. And thirdly, you will have the, the formats. So this is what really creates the premium. Yeah. And in places where you have an attractive audience to sell in a on a site that itself adds value to the marketing message, so it has a, has a positive brand association mm -hmm. with the ad, and you can provide a very impactful ad unit mm -hmm. or format, mm -hmm. that is really the premium. Now, for this, there will always be natural scarcity. Mm -hmm. You simply cannot fit that many appealing, large, rich media formats on a, on a page without destroying the user experience yeah. of the user. Um, there will never be an infinite amount of high brand quality websites out there. Mm -hmm. And also for the attractive audience segments, 
uh, whether that is on the young women or the affluent above 50 men, mm -hmm. th there's natural scarcity of that as well. Yeah. So this will become t to define the premium. Actually, it doesn't become to, it already defines it. It's just not structured well. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest, I think there will be a, a large performance market out there. Yeah. And the performance market will most likely be or to be driven. RTV driven yeah. because it simply makes sense. It's absolutely. It's yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It, there's no point in trying to basically push the premium down to the bottom yeah. tier. So otherwise, you lose the premiumness from these three components. Mm -hmm. So there will most likely be an RTV layer mm -hmm. that will probably be 50 to 70 percent of all the impressions mm -hmm. in gross volume, and then the top layer will be 30 to 50 percent depending mm -hmm. on publisher and how much of how many valuable audiences they have, how many of the high value brands they have mm. in terms of their site portfolio and how many good formats they can fit well into their page layouts. Mm. Uh, and this will make start making up the top of the triangle as it always has. Yeah. And growing this by providing better, more brand appropriate targeting based on demographics, for example, and growing the value of this or justifying the premiumness of it by providing very insightful reporting, mm. I think these are these are the things that we are going to really be looking at in 2013. Okay, Hachu, thanks very much. That was a great overview of the data-driven publisher, and uh, that was Trader Talk TV. Thanks, much. Thank you.